So in the century between 1815 and 1915, about 30 million people emigrated from Europe to the United States. And some number, I'm not quite sure what, emigrated, you know, being here in New York, we think immigration is all coming in through Ellis Island. People emigrated from China also in this period, coming in on the West Coast, and people emigrated from the South, from Mexico or Latin America, not nearly in the same numbers as more recently. But the major source of immigration at this time were Europeans. Um, and in the period that we're talking about, a large chunk came in the 1840s, well, in the 1840s and 50s, over two million immigrants entered the United States, which was more than the population of the United States when the country was founded. Um, or not, no, not that, but if you look at, eight, let's say, 1820 to 1860, it's more than the uh, population of the United States in 1790 when the nation was founded. The largest number came from Ireland, a little over two million from Ireland, um, and the rest from Northern and Western Europe, from, Engl from the British Isles, other than Ireland, from England, Scotland, Wales, from Germany, from Scandinavia. This is the so-called old immigration, the old immigration, Northern and Western Europe. Later on in the 1890s, there will be a shift to the so-called new immigration from Eastern and Southern Europe, uh, from the Russian Empire, for Jewish people, others, etc. cetera, at that, at that time. Most of these immigrants went to the North. Um, a very a, quite a small percentage ended up going to the South. They did not want to compete with slave labor. Um, and um, so the Northern population, as I mentioned last time, grows rapidly because of um, immigration. The only places in the South that attracted large numbers of immigrants were on the periphery, major cities, Baltimore, um, St. Louis, um, uh, uh, New Orleans, but these are on the periphery of the real heart of the South. Now, most immigrants entered through New York City, although a very large number entered through Boston also. Um, and many of them moved further west, but many of them stayed here. Um, New York had, by, the, by 1860, New York had over 300,000 Irish-born and German-born residents, which in a population of maybe a million, that's, that's quite a bit. Um, but many went west. The state of Wisconsin had very large immigrant populations, cities like Cincinnati and um, others in the west, Milwaukee, Chicago, very large immigrant populations. Why? Why did these people suddenly start turning up? Um, well, I'm not going to give you a lecture on European history here, but of course the, the, fact, the factors in Europe were disrupting the lives of many people and propelling them to seek a new life somewhere. Um, for complicated reasons, the European population was growing very rapidly in the 19th century. Um, the factory system was being installed and disrupting large numbers of the livelihood of large numbers of people, craft workers, handicraft workers, being displaced by uh, factory production. Um, the agricultural revolution of so-called enclosures, which goes way back, but was continuing to consolidate land ownings in Europe and in, in England, Germany, and others, and pushing small marginal farmers uh, off their land into cities, into factory labor, or into emigration. Um, many immigrants were skilled workers, be, particularly British or German, being uh, displaced by factory labor. And those didn't have a heck of a lot of trouble fitting in in the United States, because the Industrial Revolution was considerably less advanced in the United States, and there was still a lot of demand for skilled craft labor. Some immigrants were also political refugees, particularly the so-called 48ers. The, the revolution, the failed revolutions of 1848 in Europe um, unleashed a flow of immigrants to the United States, particularly Germans who, who uh, you know, were radical Germans who fled the failure of the revolutions there. In fact, Karl Marx, who was an exile from Prussia in Brussels in the, on the eve of the revolution of 1848, was thinking of emigrating to the United States. He thought there was no particular avenue for his particular politics there. Uh, he didn't, but he just many, many people of that a kind of outlook did. Um, but in the main, the immigrants were 
peasants, basically, pushed off the land for one reason or another, where the factory system couldn't absorb them. Um, now, not even though we tend to be rather self-absorbed in our, hist our study of history, um, we should remember that a lot of people didn't come to the United States. There was a vast German migration eastward into Poland, into Russia. Not everybody said, hey, I'm going to the United States. In fact, there were larger population movements in this era within Asia than the transatlantic. You know, we're not the only country with a lot of immigrants, even though sometimes you read American history books, they say, oh, that's what makes us unique, we got immigrants. No, everybody has immigrants. We had a lot, but a lot of other places had a lot uh, also. Um, but um, the largest push of immigrants, of course, was the Irish famine, which begins in the mid to late 1840s and continues into the 1850s. The, the, you know, Ireland was a particular case. It was ruled over in a very oppressive way by Great Britain. The land was, the land was largely owned in large holdings by um, uh, Anglo-Irish landlords. Um, the peasants live, worked this land on very small plots of land, paying high rent and very marginally, existing very marginally, even in good times. And then when this potato, this fungus that destroyed the potato, the potato was the major crop, the major food staple of Ireland. And when this potato fungus hit, not only in Ireland, but in many other parts of Europe, it was particularly devastating in Ireland. It basically destroyed the food supply. And in the terrible winter of 1847 to 48, uh, a million people starved to death in Ireland. Ireland had a population of about 8 million at that time. A million people starved to death, and over the next year or two, another 2 million basically left the country, either for the United States or Great Britain, basically, to try to uh, survive. These were just refugees from famine. They were not leaving for, for economic opportunity as much as leaving in order to survive um, where they were. Um, down at the Battery here in Manhattan, they, about 10 years ago, they built a little memorial to the Irish famine. It's a, a, a little cottage from the west of Ireland was transported over here and plunked down in lower Manhattan. I don't know if it survived Hurricane Sandy or not, if, or if it's still there. It's still, I, it's still there, all right, glad to hear it. It's a, I mean, it's great, it's cool, there should be such a, it's another example of how we prefer to memorialize bad events that happened in other countries <laughs> rather than what we did, you know. Irish famine, well, I won't go into what I said the first time. So, um, in the late 1840s and 1850s, these immigrants poured into the United States. As I say, the Germans came under less duress. Many of them moved west. They, they moved up the social scale rather well. Many of them came with some money. Um, they took up farming in the west. They took up craft skills. The Irish came penniless and landed and mostly stayed put. Uh, they settled in cities. They didn't leave, and they became the kind of proletariat of that era, the lowest part of the, you know, the unskilled um, labor force. They came with no skills that were relevant in the United States. Growing potatoes is not going to get you very far in the United States. It doesn't tell you how to farm in this country, and it doesn't tell you how to work in a city. So what they had was their physical strength, their physical labor, so they worked as, you know, digging ditches and building things and on the docks and where physical labor is, was, you know, tremendously necessary. Many of them, contrary to what you might think, many of them didn't even speak English. They came from the far, the west of Ireland where people spoke Gaelic. They learned English here, a lot of them. We tend to think of them, oh, they landed, they spoke English, that was good. But no, the, not all of them, not all of them did, um, uh, definitely. You know, there's an old story about the immigrant who pops over, comes over and says, you know, I thought, I thought um, the streets in America were paved with gold. I discovered they were not paved with gold. I discovered they were not paved at all. And I discovered that I was supposed to pave them. <laughs> in other words, that's the work they did. They dug canals, they built roads, they did hard physical labor, which is, you know, fine. But it's not an avenue for much social mobility, so to speak.